Murmansk, the largest city on the Arctic Circle. A city with a very sad history. During the Second World War, Murmansk was the scene of heavy fighting on the 68th parallel. The icebreaker fleet, which berths in Murmansk in the summer, is actually an unused resource. Nikolai Savelev, president of the Poseidon Arctic Voyage, saw potential in the marketing of the idle icebreakers. Uh, well, uh, during more than 10 years, Poseidon Arctic Voyages organizes the expedition cruises to the little explored, little studied and uh, hard to reach destinations of the world. There are Antarctica regions, Arctic region and uh, Russian Far East region. Of course, the most popular voyage is uh, the expedition cruise to the North Pole, about the most powerful ship of the world nuclear-powered icebreaker, 50 years of victory, or 50 years of victory, as Russians say. Some of these ships during summertime are out of duties. So Poseidon has a chance of chartering these ships for the purposes of expedition cruises to the North Pole. The Red Colossus is one of the most spectacular sea voyages that tourists can take. Its target, the North Pole. Jan Briede, the expedition leader, receives the international guests. Radio contact and visual contact is all that the experienced crew needs to guide the ship out to sea. Even if it is the most powerful icebreaker in the world, the 50 years of victory still needs help before it begins its journey through the Kola Peninsula Fjord. The first port of call is 1,200 kilometers away, Franz Josef Land. Jan Briede uses this time to introduce the captain and crew. The passengers use this as an opportunity to stand next to the captain of the biggest icebreaker in the world. Everyone is proud of a photo with the captain. It's a souvenir and a memento of a very unusual sea voyage. The North Pole explorers get their first contact with the southern flank of Franz Josef Land when they come across the Bell Islands. One of the most reliable helicopters operating in the Arctic, the Mi-8, flies the passengers comfortably and safely to dry land. The tiny Bell Island stretches like a horseshoe round a lagoon, which is open to the southwest. Ladies and gentlemen, a very welcome on Franz Josef Land. My name is Jan Briede, I'm from Germany and I'm the expedition leader aboard the 50 Years of Victory, or as you say, 
PDC Atlet Pobiedi, the most strongest ice breaker in the world. We are on the way to the North Pole and right now, due to the fantastic weather, we are doing a little stop on Franz Josef Land. And we are just landing our passengers with a helicopter on top of uh, the island of uh, Maybell, uh, 375 meters above sea level, on top of a table mountain. Absolutely fantastic weather conditions, so welcome to Franz Josef Land. memories, as one would say today. The German artist Rainer Ulrich is the expedition painter on board. The job of expedition painter was in great demand during the 17th and 18th centuries. In those days, the expedition would take an artist with them on their voyages of discovery in order to paint and draw documentary evidence of the discoveries found on these adventures. The Rubini Rock, north of the Bell Islands, is an interesting rock formation with its partially curved basalt columns. And the area also is famous for having the largest collection of breeding grounds in the Franz Josef Land archipelago. Brunish skillemots, kittiwakes and glaucous gulls swoop around close to their nests on the cliff face. The dramatic jagged cliffs of Cape Tegetov were the first landmarks that the Austro-Hungarian expedition discovered once the thick fog had lifted under the leadership of Payer and Weibrecht on the 30th of August 1873. Back then it was a real problem to actually get onto the land. These days, a flight over Cape Tegetov is one of the highlights of an expedition to Franz Josef Land. It's not only the strange rock formations of Cape Tegetov that make an expedition onto land interesting, but also the abundant flora here on the 18th parallel. Where normal passenger ships reach their limit with regard to the proximity of the ice is where the 50 years of victory really comes into its own. Passengers can experience the might of the Wilczek Glacier really close up. The icebreaker has little difficulty carving its way through the pack ice, but the frozen giants are a crucial part of the lives of polar bears, and that's the reason why a conscious effort must be made to protect this endangered species.
victory leaves Franz Josef Land behind it. There's still nearly 1,000 kilometers to go to the North Pole. The passengers have much time to consider exactly how they will pass the time that the icebreaker requires to cover the huge distance. But the crew are trained in diversionary tactics. Whether it's a barbecue on the foredeck or a Russian evening with national specialties, the one thing that counts about the victory is international friendship. A beautiful day is brought to an end with new friends and nostalgic sounds in the bar. Was so exciting, something in my heart Told me I must have you Strangers in the night Could only people be with strangers in the night Up to the moment we set up the sun The countdown has begun We've nearly reached our destination. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, half a mile to go. We are already starting to reduce the speed. So we are slowing down because we will very carefully and slow, gentle touch the North Pole. So half a mile to go. Joy and excitement on deck, long-held dreams have finally come true. The feeling to have reached the most northerly point on the planet on the 50 years of victory is indescribable. But, of course, it's only natural that each and every participant wants to stand on this special point themselves. The feelings and statements of the huge variety of the passengers mirror the feelings of all present. It is a genuine feeling of happiness, a crazy emotion. I'm totally surprised that the captain managed to guide the ship directly to 90 degrees, directly to the pole, and so quickly. Everyone's happy here, the champagne is flowing and everyone's in a great mood. How do you feel standing here at the top of the globe, 90 degrees north? But for the first time, I feel as if I'm standing on the roof of the world. It seems as though the whole planet is underneath me. My sensations are inexplicable, complete joy and enthusiasm. It's very difficult to describe, but this is the best place on the planet. I would like to give out a gigantic thank you to Poseidon Arctic Voyage for giving me the opportunity of visiting possibly the most unusual place on this planet. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are not many people who can say that they've been to the most northerly point on the planet. As diverse the nationalities present on the ice, so the range of emotions exhibited.
the sporty and the brave have ample opportunity to give free rein to their wildest ambitions out here. Bioengineered in Germany, they are the first golfing suppliers that tee off at geographic 90 degrees north, the North Pole. The circle is one of the most ancient and significant signs that humanity has. The circle of perfection. Every single point on the circle is different to the next. All of these people of different nationalities are searching for peace. A small sign of peace is placed at the top of the world, maybe in the future for the whole of humanity.